Well, in this video, I thought we'd take a look at the second BMS board that came from the 4 amp hour batteries. So in a previous video, 4 amp hour repair number two, we had issues with the BMS wiring and I thought we had a spare BMS board, but when I hook the second BMS up, we see that there's an issue. Orange blinks at weird patterns and it looks like the, um, the 10 volts on that DC, the DC converter is okay across our caps there that our transistor, that Q12 transistor cuts on. It looks like that's putting out our 10 volts when I push the button as I was checking it, but um, it'll wake it up and then it'll go to sleep. But So we did have a bad BMS. It's the one reason I believe uh, this is the one that came off of this pack originally because that's probably why someone opened it up and was a little bit um, hasty and snatched a, snatched a wiring off the board. But we do see that this this one here works fine so so it did take the two packs to make one a relatively easy repair it wasn't uh, it wasn't too much to it, it was kind of fun to, to see the differences in them uh, this one's definitely different than the 2.5 amp hour and I learned that the BMS was different as well as the transistors in between this uh, pretty interesting the way to do the individual sales monitor on the larger packs so so we noticed with the BMS board hooked up and getting our flashing orange or red light. If we notice, it looks like it's almost a code. It's kind of a weird blink, but it does seem to be a pattern to it. So just, just for the heck of it, I want to get my oscilloscope over. And um, I could go right on the LED probably, but Q16 here seems to correlate with the pulses, so if I go to Q16, we definitely see our pulses. So this could be serial communication data. Um, maybe Ego hooked up to the pack and they could they could get a code, maybe a hexadecimal code. I'm not sure. It's probably off that microcontroller um, bus. But what's neat is they're putting that to the LED output too, but I can't quite count it with my eye, but I can tell it's flashing at different rates and different patterns. I'm going to go, I started off with 100 milliseconds per division. I want to go to, let's try 500 milliseconds. We'll try half a second. Slow that down, see if it get across there. We can see more detail in the pulses, but I still run out of, I run out of time, so I'm going to go to one second per division. That's enough to get all the data or not. Well, I do have a I have a screen full of it. I stop it right there. We can zoom in a bit here. Let's just start with this packet here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is the long pulse there so is that I don't guess that's showing that still 7 is having a problem that might be coincidental there let's let's keep going one two three four five pulses I don't know if that's just an in-between uh, like spacer or not one two three four five six the long one is six, and then one, two, three, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. Now that's that's interesting that we're showing like five space six space and seven. It's almost like I squared C or SPI serial communication protocol. It did run out of um, time there. Let's go back and do that again. I'm on a 
the base of Q16 here. Push the button. We got it set for one second. You know what? I think I'm I think I'm gonna set this for two seconds. There it goes. Alright, so that's all the blinks. I'm just gonna start it again. At least we, we know we capture the start of the blinks again there. So alright, make sure we got it all. If that makes sense. Go ahead and zoom in a tad so you can see on the bottom a little bit more detail here what we're looking at. So this is what I assume is the start of the pulses but once again here I hit the button again so we'll make sure we'll verify that but here we get one, two, three, four, five, and six pulses again and goes down and we got a four little break there one two three four five and, uh, and then it goes down we got some four limiters and spacers one two three four five and six and one two three four five all right they cut out there so it's almost like no matter where you hit the button at it's going to give a certain amount it don't seem to um, it don't seem to time out after it's done with the bits or anything to me. And that's just my thinking there. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, repeating six being that long, like it's trying to tell you right there. We'll stop there. Let's count six, and then one, two, three, four, five small ones. And it does look like that. Where we started it here did correlate over to the beginning here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that does seem to be the same to me, which I did, that does have a different digit in it, so slightly different. That's interesting. That uh, that does make me want to check my lower number cells here, if that makes sense. See, all my stuff's plugged in. So after going around on this board at our B1, all the way around to B7 and then B8 to B14 checking individually I have had some issues as far as um, the actual voltage level that it shows one thing to watch out for if we go to our common we could truly go around to B1 and we see our 4 volts we could just go all the way around B8 you know B9 and then we notice right there that um we got 32 volts, 32 volts, then we get our 8 volts, that's, that's weird, 8 volts difference. So we go in between, we're just getting like half a volt. And that one's getting closer, but still, something's going on between these cells. And you would think it might be something to do with the way I connected my my wires up, except for when you when you plug this board up, it actually reads fine. And the save time on video I won't show that. So going in between these, we see that something isn't right. The odd thing is, I actually was having the same issue around B6. And I was able to push on the connector and it started acting okay. When I was checking to start with. So I do have some corrosion in here. I don't even know if you can see that on camera. But there is some corrosion. I'm going to clean this up before I go any further because something's acting up. And it could even be something going in between the layers on this board. But if I actually do my continuity check. Get that one, get that one, I get that one. So that's odd. And I had to stop myself from looking into the connector problem because this connector, once again, it works fine with this BMS board. So I know the problem has to be in here, even though I've gone through and um, it checks good. And I was concerned that I might have a little shorted, the little dual package transistors here that was causing an issue. 
But if we actually go to diode check, we'll start at B11 and work backwards. We see that we don't have anything in between that's causing that. And if we switch around, we see our PN junction there, there, there. So I don't think I don't think it's anything to do with those little dual uh, transistor packages. So back now after cleaning this connector up for the for the um, cells eight through fourteen, I cleaned it up a little bit of white vinegar sitting on the contacts and cleaned it up and then rinsing it really really well with alcohol, let it dry good. I actually had a little stainless steel brush that I gently went over with the bristles. I just did not get all the co corrosion off. I don't know if the camera picks that up. It's just, it's hard to see. Even with a microscope, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but it did clean up really well. And a lot of stuff did come out of it. Debris did come out of it in the little bowl. I used this bowl to clean several things. So it, it wasn't all that, but I could tell a lot of stuff washed out of it. So this did come out of the pack. Of course, it had a lot of the corrosion issues. I've never seen cells get that corroded and get that wet. I've never seen uh, these connectors get like this either. So so if we check this now across cell 9 and 10. Well, look at that. we got our 4 volts. That's a good sign. And across 10 and 9. That's awesome. So there's our 4. And there's our 8. Nice. So now that should be the same all the way across. Boom. we got our green light. So that was nothing but a um, corrosion issue on that connector. So that might be good to know. I hadn't run into that yet. Of course, if you lose your cells, you're going to get your red blinking light. Bring the known good one back over. Just make sure everything's still working okay with it. Before we end the video. there we go awesome so very very happy about that so that's all it was on this BMS making it blink red was the connection so it's worth your time to go across from B1 to B7 and B8 all the way to B14 which B14 actually comes from your power connector, by the way. But the rest of these, as you can see, they go across pretty easy to find them and check. But that's how I found a connection issue was going across from in between your cells, uh, monitoring between B1 and B2 and so forth, all the way across. I did have a connection issue, so I, I cleaned this connector up as well while I was at it. I was able to move it around, and I got my B6 or B7 back. Where I was losing it when I first checked it off camera. After I got that, I was still having the red blinking light. So I started checking over here and, and saw something similar here. But I thought it was odd that I was re I was reading my 8 volts across from B8 to B10. But I wasn't reading it from my 4 volts from B8 to B9 or B9 to B10. So I knew that B9 was where my connection issue was. So it didn't look that bad other than corrosion. I was scared it was uh, loose here on the board, but it, with my meter, I could actually ring it out. So that's what was a little bit confusing, but, but that's all it was. We cleaned that connector up. We got a spare BMS board. So so if you like this video, look at this 4 amp hour BMS board repair. Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.